from Matthew, chapter 6, verse 9. Pray then in this way, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I know some of you weren't here that the first one, uh, but this comes out of the vision that Pastor Jason uh, gave to us as a church. And when I was sitting there listening to it and then reading it, and then Mike and I have met a few times to talk about the mission, to see how we can put it together, that you don't see it as you know one part here, one part there, and one part there, how it can all connect together and interlock together. Um, we realized, you know, it's going to take prayer. <laughs> it's going to take prayer. It's not going to take natural abilities. It's going to take prayer. But the other thing that hit me is this. It's going to take big people. Um, I don't know if you realize, but, but it's a pity that when we read the New Testament, especially from Acts onwards, we can think it's only about Paul. But really, Paul had a team of up to 50 people, men and women, uh, working that whole belt from Rome over into Greece, over into Asia Minor, down into Judea and Jerusalem. He had a team of up to 50 people. It wasn't just Paul. So we want to grow big people. You understand that? People who don't take offense. People who are not trying to promote their own agendas. People who don't use a title as a position of power. And when I say big people, it's big servants with a servant heart. So that's where this all is coming from. We looked first time at our Father who art in heaven. So tonight we're going to move it on to Hallowed be your name. Last time, as I said, we looked at our Father who art in heaven. We mentioned that this prayer, of course we've said it in, we've said it in school, haven't we? For years and years and years it's become uh, quite and it became quite repetitive. And, but this prayer comes out of the disciples asking Jesus, Jesus, how are we going to pray? John's disciples know how they are going to pray. Jesus, how do you want your disciples to pray? So this was a community prayer. This prayer was for the community of disciples who follow Jesus, so it's for us. John's community of disciples that gathered around Jesus, uh, John's disciples had their prayer. You know, that's what they said to Jesus, isn't it? Teach us to pray as John's disciples. Jesus' community of disciples then would pray this prayer. This prayer is for every community of disciples of Jesus. I'm going to touch on next time, but one thing that Western society has done harm for in Christianity is this. They've made Christianity very individualistic. That is not biblical. whether it comes from, you know, we all, over the years, we rights of this and rights of this one, rights of that one. But Western civilization has not helped Christianity with this message of individualism. Christianity, yes, there are individual aspects, 
We're not saved as a group, we're saved as individuals. But we are saved to be then part of a group. So this is a community prayer. It's also a family prayer. This is how God's family prays. This prayer is for the family of God. God is the father of the human family by creation. It says in Acts, we are God's offspring. But then we must also balance it with something that Jesus said, which was quite tough. You're all of your father, you're all of your father, the, the devil. But when I'm talking, yeah, yeah. But, but what I'm, what, why, when I'm saying this is a family, this is the family prayer for those who have had a new birth in the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is a community prayer. This is a family prayer. People not born of natural descent, nor of human decision or of a husband's will, but born of God. Added to this truth of being family is the truth of adoption. Now, I'm not going to go into that tonight, but we need to. See, this prayer, if we don't understand we're sons and daughters of God, this prayer is going to go nowhere. The first word, first two words, our Father. We are part of God's family by regeneration, but also by adoption. Someone has said that this truth of spiritual adoption is perhaps one of, if not the most neglected truth of Christianity. See, and it will help us move from the cross to the throne. Yes, we celebrate the cross, but we are living around the throne of God. And knowing our spiritual adoption will move us to around the throne. For we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In love, in love he, and he is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He predestinated us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself. So next time, we'll look more about this adoption. Because this prayer is teaching us Praying comes out of relationship with our Father. So this prayer then, I mentioned it's a community prayer. This is how Jesus' community of disciples pray. Now, I said last time, this prayer, yes, you can say it, but this prayer gives us guidelines of how we can structure our praying and what we need, how we, how we need to pray. But it's also a lifestyle prayer. It's a mission prayer. Jesus is saying, and this is the challenge, my community of disciples are not going to be known for some affiliation to a church. My community of disciples are not going to be known for BAs and all this sort of stuff. My community of disciples are going to be known for this. They are in relationship with God the Father. And my, and my community of disciples are going to be known for worship. They're going to be known for forgiveness. 
They're going to be known for daily dependence. Give us this day, Lord. Not give us in 2026. Give us this day. And at the end of this day, we say, Lord, thank you. And then tomorrow we say again, Lord, give us this day. My community of disciples are going to be known for intercession. The community then of Jesus' disciples will pray these things. And this is what the community is looking for. And Lord, we want to put hands and feet onto the prayer. Lord, forgive us, but we want to be forgiven. Lord, Give us. I'm not going to see any of my brothers and sisters in need. Give us, Lord. I'm not going to be selfish. Lord, I'm going to be a generous disciple because I'm praying for us. Lord, I don't want a big house on the big hill in Ponte de Lis. Lord, I want us all to have. Do you understand? So this prayer is transforming. This prayer will grow big people. So this is what we covered last week. How long have I been? Too long, say. So our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Father is absolutely key here. It's the key word in this first line of the prayer. It's also key for the rest of the prayer. So who is our father? Who is he? God. Who is he? We do Jesus. He might disagree with me now, which is fine. See, it's a pity that when we present Jesus and his mission on earth, we just talk about him coming and dying on the cross. Really, there was three strands to Jesus' mission when he came to earth. Um, one, yes, he was to come and give his life as a ransom for sin. But he also came to reveal who God our Father is. And we don't take the truths, we don't take, this can be a difficult area for some, it depends on what their natural fathers were like, and it can be horrendous, and it has been horrendous for, for some people. But we don't take our guidance from there, we take our guidance from who the father was, to Jesus. And we take our guidance from who Jesus says is the Father. Jesus came, yes, to give his life as a substitute for sin, but he also came to reveal to us the relationship that we can have with God the Father after our conversion. So who is our Father? Our Heavenly Father. Our Father is Spirit. So he's not thought of in physical terms. He's invisible, but he's not bounded. He's not restricted by time or place or things. Our Father is all-powerful and sovereign. He has life in himself, and he's always working in the affairs of creation. As Almighty God, nothing is impossible to him. His control extends to the smallest details of life, so that not even a sparrow falls to the ground apart from what he knows. Who's our Father? Our Father is perfect. 
Nothing can be added to our Father. He is perfect. There cannot be any development in his character. He doesn't get better. He doesn't get worse. He's perfect. There is no defect. There is no excess. There is no inconsistency. There is no stain. He hasn't got skeletons in the cupboard. Your father is perfect, Gloria. He's perfect. Our father is good. Some have said that this is our father's supreme characteristic. He is good, and he always does good. He's our father. Amen. Our father is holy. Jesus called him holy father. Without sin, without any stain of sin, he is holy. Our father is righteous. Jesus called him, O oh, righteous father. Our father is just. Our father is merciful. Our father is loving. Our father is forgiving. Our father is generous. Our father knows our needs. Our father only gives good gifts. Our father gives us promises. Our father is perfect. And all those descriptions of his character and his abilities and his attributes, Jesus spoke on this earth. I haven't referred to anything in the Old Testament. I haven't gone into Paul. You find all those characteristics, and there's more. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Jesus came to reveal the Father. Our Father Think of the parables that Jesus taught about our father, the prodigal son. That's our father. The parable I love is the unjust judge. <laughs> it talks about a widow going, isn't it? And by the looks, in colloquial terms, she was ready to thump him. And Jesus taught that parable and he says, your father is not like that at all. Think of the works that Jesus did. What did Jesus say? What I'm doing, the fa I'm doing what the father has said to me. The father said to Jesus, Jesus, go into the Gadarenes and get that man in the graveyard who's cutting himself and deliver him. See, I feel it's a pity when we look at the miracles and healings of Jesus. Please think about the difference it all made to the family. That demonized man who was cutting himself, he was naked. If you were a family there, you'd be ashamed of him, true? True. Oh, he's not mine. He's, he's not part of me. <laughs> but Jesus came and delivered him. What a difference. The miracles Jesus said, did, the healings he did, the things he said, they are revealing to us our Father. And of course, we can look at his own relationship with his Father. And Jesus says to us, he can be your Father. So, everything then that Jesus has given about the Father, descriptions, parables, miracles, his own rela relationship, I trust it tells us, trust him. Trust your Father tonight. Tells us, grow in your relationship with him. Tells us, put our life lives in his hands yes accept his correction accept his discipline for it's for our good make him our father let's bow I haven't finished let's bow our heads
Do you want to say something to you, a father, tonight? Your heavenly father. What do you want to say to him? So Jesus also said, therefore, you be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Now, we know, and there's plenty of other scriptures that helps us to understand what Jesus is saying there. So the goal is to be like Father. Seemingly, uh, I, look, I look much like my father. I have a daughter called Anne Harrod, and um, they say she looks like me. Poor thing. <laughs> <laughs> but are you like your heavenly father tonight? Forgiving? Forgiving? Merciful. But there's one further truth to mention about our Father, and it's words that you know. For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you have not received a spirit of slavery, leading to fear again, but you have received a spirit of adoption, as sons by which we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, heirs also, heirs of God, and follow heir, fellow heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. Our relationship with our Heavenly Father is made real by the presence of the Holy Spirit. And that's what we're going to do in a few minutes. We've done it on Alpha at times, haven't we? We've reached out our hands and we've said, Holy Spirit, come. Come. These verses in Romans, the Holy Spirit testifies to us that we are his children. The Holy Spirit leads us as his children. The Holy Spirit puts Abba, Father, on our lips. Dear Father, my Father, Father, my Father. The Holy Spirit tells us deep in our hearts that we really are God's children. When Jesus taught this prayer to the disciples, and it's, it's in Luke, there's a verse, he teaches them the prayer. Then we have, um, you know, the story about the man turning up at the house unexpected. And then we have the verses, ask and you will receive, knock and seek, you know all that. The pity about that section is we split it up into individual parts. And right at the end of that little teaching that Jesus gives to his disciples, there is this. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? It's as if Jesus is saying this prayer our Father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done this challenge ask and keep on asking seek and keep on seeking knock and keep on knocking it's as if Jesus is saying that will become real by the presence of the Holy Spirit. 
It's an amazing prayer, isn't it? Thy kingdom come. Wow. <laughs> With the presence of the Holy Spirit, it'll come. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed means we want you, Lord, our Heavenly Father, to be set apart. We don't want you to be seen as something common or someone common. We want you to be set apart. We want you to be venerated. We're wanting you to be revered. We're wanting you to be seen as holy. Our Father, hallowed be your name. This is the first request of the prayer. Firstly, it teaches us, remember what we said last time about this prayer is settling down in God. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Lord, before I ask anything, Lord, I want to know more about who you are. I want you, Lord, to impress on my spirit who you are. I want you, Lord, to impress on me now how powerful you are, how superior you are. Lord, I want you, I want you to impress on me the greatness of your love for me, the greatness of your love for us all. Lord, I'm settling down and before I go anywhere with anything, Lord, I want to know you afresh, that you are my Father. And Lord, I'm praying this also because I'm saying, Lord, it's not about me. It's about you. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. That's the first request of the prayer. The first request is not, Lord, I want, I want a Rolls Royce next week. Lord, I want this, I want that. Lord, my first request is not about myself, but my first request is about you. Lord, I want you a name hallowed. I'm starting, Lord, with this request, Lord, we give you preeminence in our hearts and in our minds and in our lives. Lord, Lord, I'm praying, hallowed be your name. Lord, I want your name to be recognized above all names in the Bible. You know, for us, names are just a mark of identity. But in the Bible, names were not just identity, but they spoke of somebody's character. Hallowed be your name. We want you to be recognized for who you are, Father. You're our Father. Lord, we're not going to just we're not going to call you the man upstairs or with, with any familiarity or anything. But Lord, we want you to be recognized. You're our father. You're superior. You're unique. Your character, your attributes. There's no one or nothing like you. But Lord, we also ask in you. The way I say it is this, Lord, I want you to be famous. 
Holy Father, we want your name and only your name to be honoured, revered and venerated and feared and respected. Holy Father, we only want you to be worshipped, you to be adored, you to be praised. Lord, as someone says, this prayer demands that I set aside my own agenda and live to bring glory to his name instead. We're God's family, remember? This is the prayer of family tonight. Lord, we want you to be head of the house. We want you to be father. We're God's family. And we bear his name. We pray, hallowed be your name for ourselves. We're the voice and the feet of this request. Lord, we don't want our lifestyles to contradict who you are. So tonight, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Martin Luther said, this petition demands nothing else than that God's honour be sought in all, before all, and beyond all else, and that our whole life redound forever only for God's glory. Lord, our Father, hallowed be your name. I just felt led tonight to give opportunity for us to pray for the Holy Spirit. As I said, when you read about it in Luke, I think Jesus is saying, none of it will become a reality without the Holy Spirit. And I read from Romans, it's the Holy Spirit in who witnesses we're born of God. We might know it in our heads. But we, need to, we want to know it here, don't we? Pastor Jason's got a song for us to play. Thank you. <laughs> 